So here I'm in CentOS 8 again, and I want to show you running podman commands as the regular user instead of using the root user, because that's one of the big features of podman. And so one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to do podman info as my regular user again. And I'm going to show you that this time when I do podman info, I see that it says rootless is true. And that's because I'm running the podman commands as the non-root user. And I can also see that my run root, where it says that I'm running out of, is run, slash run slash user slash 1000. And that my graph root, so my container storage, is under my home directory, which is home dma.local share container storage. I can see that my registries are configured to be the same, which is registry.redhat.io, quay.io, and docker.io. If you remember from the last video, one of the things that we did was we downloaded that Alpine Linux container using a podman pull command. And so if we did a podman images uh, command on the root user, we saw that we had that image available. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that if I do a podman images command, that I don't see that Alpine Linux image that I downloaded. So what I'll do is I'll do a podman pull alpine latest and I'll download that alpine latest image down from the registry again and if I do a podman images I'll see that I now have that alpine linux um, image downloaded from the registry and I can do the same thing that I did last time which is the podman run command and let's do a dash dash help on the dash the run just so that we see what these options do and we see that uh, dash i is for interactive so it says keep standard in open even if not attached and the dash t is tty so allocate a pseudo tty for the container so when we do that we are able to do a docker run minus it and if we look at the way we invoke the docker run command we see that we have the command options so that's the minus it that we put and the image name, which in this case is alpine colon latest, and then the command that we want to run inside of the container. In this case, we're going to do bin slash sh because we want to run a shell. And so we're going to do alpine latest bin sh, and oops, that was podman or docker, so let's do it actually with um, it's these commands are actually so interchangeable that. It's easy to sometimes forget that we're not using Docker, that we're actually using Podman. So we'll do Podman run minus IT. And this actually, uh, by the way, showing running Docker instead shows that the Docker daemon is not currently running. And so that's actually a good thing. So we'll do Podman run minus IT Alpine latest bin sh. And we will see that we are now inside of that container again. So if I do hostname, we actually see that we are in fact running inside of the container. And we do the same thing we did last time where we touch a file, but uh, I am in container, and we'll control D to escape that. We'll see you back to temp, and we'll see that that file was not created inside of the host, which means that we were in fact inside of the container. And if I do a podman container list dash dash all again, we can see that we do have that container that was exited 31 seconds ago. Uh, that was running that bin sh and we were able to run that as a regular user instead of running it as the root user and we did that without a daemon and to show that I'm going to do systemctl status and I'm just going to grab for podman just to make sure that there's no uh, we don't see any services running um, for podman which is what we want because podman is able to run as a rootless container and it does not require a daemon. So let's really good for Podman. It's one of the good use cases and why it's actually an improvement over Docker, and we'll see that a little later in this course. All right, I'll see you in the next video.